From our studios in Los Angeles, here is Maria Shriver. They say no good deed goes unpunished. That may not always be true, but it certainly was in the story you're about to see. A family man who only wanted to help ended up hurt, badly hurt. His life in tatters, his finances in ruins, accused of a horrendous crime. You probably think such a thing could never happen to you. Kids, he was pretty committed. Yeah, wanted to make a difference. They raised a, a substantial amount of money for this orphanage uh, in a short period of time. Uh, within five months, they raised uh, close to $100,000. That's a lot yeah. of money. And you can imagine how far that kind of money would go in Mexico. Eventually, world-famous movie stars would attend gala fundraising parties for the orphanage, like this one, with Raquel Welch, which raised 50000 in one night. Because so much money was coming in, David set up a non-profit organization in the name of the orphanage, the Door of Faith. He would be the president. David says the charity's accounting rules were to be satisfied with a simple arrangement. David raised the money and gave it to Diego, and in return, Diego would provide receipts showing how the money was used to care for the children. Simple. Except, says David, for all the money he sent down here, no receipts came back. Was he afraid the director of the orphanage would become corrupt? Yes, he was stealing money. His father's suspicions grew stronger, Jeff says, after Diego sent David two sets of accounting books, in which the numbers simply can leave. Back home in California, David Cathcart decided to tell the officers of the nonprofit foundation he had set up about his suspicions. But before he could, he got an extraordinary telephone call from Diego's orphanage, and that changed everything. They called him and said a, a boy had fallen and gotten hurt, and they need my dad to come up there with some money to help take him to the hospital and pay for it. David didn't hesitate a moment. He rushed to his car and drove directly to the hospital. And there to meet him? No one from the orphanage. Only the Federales, Mexican police. He was thrown against a wall with machine guns to his head, and his picture was taken and put on the front page of the newspapers in Mexico, charged with child molestation. David told his family that Gabriel Diego Garcia, the man who had taken over the orphanage, the man he had threatened to report to the authorities for suspicious accounting, must have forced the boys to lie about being molested to shut him up. It's a story that longtime orphanage worker Isabel Chavela believes is true. The ones who have love for the children are the Americans because they are the ones who take them food and clothes. They send them the money, but they don't see what is going on at the orphanage. And Chavela says it was David Cathcart and not Diego who fed the children and cured them of head lice and foot fungus. <laughs> He brought clothes, medicine, food, and everything. He would care for them. Diego would dedicate himself to punishing the children, to hit them. On top of all that, Chavela says, David never behaved strangely at the orphanage. He came during the day like he always did. He never hid from anyone, and we never noticed anything wrong. We would say to each other, how could he have raped those kids if we never saw anything? There were always workers around there. Like David's family, Chavela says she and many other workers at the orphanage believed David was being set up. He told me to say that he raped me. Raped? Yep. But you were not? No, no. No, they never touched me for do something like that. One by one, three of the boys who had accused David of molesting them told Bollard the same remarkable story. Each one of these boys said that Diego had regularly beaten them and physically abused them, and they were scared to death of him. And the last thing they wanted to do, now that they'd escaped that environment, is to make a new enemy of him where he knew he knows where they are and he knows how to find them. They're saying to you, he's innocent, he didn't do this, but we're afraid to change our testimony. Absolutely. But what about the last boy, the one still living at the orphanage under Diego's care? In order to have a child removed from an orphanage to come to court to do anything, you have to have permission from DEEF. We filed a petition with DEEF that he be permitted to leave the orphanage 
and come forward to testify. Eve, which is the equivalent of our Child Protective Services, denied the request, stopping Bollard and his partner in their tracks. We were really scratching our heads as to how we were going to make this happen because the judge was three quarters persuaded that Dave was innocent, but there still remained one quarter of doubt. Remarkably, the last boy, Danielle Escamilla, heard about David's appeal and came forward on his own. I was young, and I would say anything they told me to say. They say he raped us at the same time, but that was a lie. We made it up. Danielle was only nine years old when he first accused David of molesting him. He says because he was so young, he was afraid to tell the truth. They made me feel really nervous because I knew the story wasn't true, but I was afraid they would do something to me. I thought they were going to do something to me. They were going to hit me. But even though all the boys were now saying they lied, David's battle wasn't over yet. Judge Flores, who had already upheld David's 12-year sentence twice, would have to agree to preside over yet another hearing. She did. And she said she did because she was determined to find the truth. And what happened in that room, she told us, was astonishing. Something important happened when I ordered Gabriel Diego Garcia to come to court. Each young man squared off in front of Gabriel and said, you forced me to lie about Mr. Cathcart raping us. Gabriel, of course, denied it. It must have taken a lot of courage for those boys to do that. I could see that they were literally shaking as they faced Gabriel and said, you beat me regularly in the orphanage. You made me lie about Mr. Cathcart or you were going to throw me out into the streets. They were upset, but while they were shaking, I could see that they were actually relieved by their recanting. Were you afraid of Gabriel when you changed your story? Yes. But I had to do it because I've never felt this bad before. How do you feel now? Well, for the first time I've got hope. Hope? Yes. Because finally, after that horrendous seven-year ordeal, Judge Flores declared David Cathcart innocent of all charges. His record would be wiped clean. As soon as the paperwork was done, he was free to go home. But that wasn't all. Judge Flores advised the prosecutor to begin an investigation of the Door of Faith Orphanage.